right. Hey everybody, how's it going? Meowth here. Patch notes are finally out, nerfs and bans have been announced, but the most important thing from today's news, the Demon Seed is banned. It's gone, and that means tomorrow is like a brand new expansion. We get to play with all of these new cards that were kind of rendered useless because Demon Seed Combo Warlock was everywhere. And so yeah, so today's video, uh, I'm going to break it into two parts. The first part's going to be all about these patch notes, talking about these cards and my initial impressions about all of them. And the second half of the video are going to be the decks that I'm the most excited to try out once the new expansion, aka the Demon Seed Banning, uh, you know, finally gets patched in tomorrow afternoon. These are the decks that I'm the most excited to play with. So first impressions, uh, diving into these patch notes. So Iron Brown Brute, Brute, going from 7 to 8. Uh, this is a change we kind of saw coming. The deck was already like fringe playable slash bad in Wild, uh, but it going from 7 to 8, uh, you know, just makes it a little bit rougher. Uh, the deck probably is not going to see a lot of play. Excited to see this unnerfed and see some new tools uh, when this eventually rotates in a year and a half. Uh, next up, we have the rework to Mind Render Lucia. Uh, she's still a 3 mana 1 3, but she now reads Replace Her Hand with a copy of your opponent's until end of turn. Uh, she's a hell of a lot worse than Agar Priest. You probably honestly cut her in Agar Priest, and she's just unplayable in Rena Priest. She doesn't do the disruption thing, so there's no reason to play her in Rena Priest. Uh, so yeah, feel free to dust this card. Free 1600 dust. Uh, next up, we've got Perpetual Flame going from 1 to 2. Another nerf that we saw coming uh, when we talked about this in the last episode of the State of Wild. Uh, 1 mana to 2. Honestly, probably still playable in your like slow control shamans. Uh, if you're playing big shaman... Uh, or like a really, really slow Shadow Walk Reno Shaman, Perpetual Flame probably should still be in your deck. Uh, the card's still busted it too, uh, especially if we're going to be seeing a lot of Pirate Warriors running around. The card's still insanely good at 2 mana. Uh, we saw the Shaman Quest get nerfed. Shoutouts to Corbett, who kind of saw this one coming. Uh, the last part of the Shaman Quest going from 2 cards with Overload to 3 cards with Overload. Uh, the Quest was already being cut <laughs> from the Shaman decks, uh, and so from 2 to 3... Probably don't even play this, uh, but it wasn't seeing very much play to begin with. So let's move on to the next card. Uh, so Demon Seed, this is the big one, right? So first things first, Demon Seed now banned in Wild. That means Wild finally playable. Uh, but it's also been nerfed for Standard. So now all steps of the quest take 8 damage rather than 6, 7, and 8. Uh, so I guess they have said that uh, if you read down here uh, in their dev comment, when the Demon Seed rotates to Wild, we will unban it and reposition the card to be more appropriate for the format. So I think this is a really, really important thing that we need to note. I think when Stealer of Souls and Demon Seed both rotate to Wild, they will receive significant reworks and or nerfs, or kind of a reevaluation of, hey, maybe Demon Seed in a year and a half is just like the new normal. You know, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but if it is, they'll kind of unnerf it and leave it at 8. Maybe they'll unnerf it to 6, 7. Just something to keep in mind. They will be unbanning the card so for all of you guys that are mad that all these cards will not be playable in the wild format they are addressing that issue they will be unbanned uh the other warlock card that's being banned is mithril rod going from three to four frick rune mithril rod the card was busted honestly even at three since they banned the demon seed not entirely sure it was going to see play maybe it was worth experimenting in rena lock with but uh at four definitely not worth it uh and so this card is also and so this card's also probably uh, just, you know, free dust for you. All right, moving into Hunter. So now we're getting into the buffs, the cards that are getting buffs. Uh, the first one, Leatherworking Kit, a uh, Hunter card uh, going from 2 mana to 1. So 1 mana, 0, 3 weapon after 3 friendly beasts die. Draw a beast, give it plus 1, plus 1, lose 1 durability. The main deck that we're looking at this in is the uh, the Beast Hunter list, uh, the Agro Beast Hunter that runs Buzzard and Hyenas uh, alongside Tundra Rhinos. Um, so you maybe want to run this as a way to kind of additional card draw if you don't draw the buzzard uh, but it's not a beast itself not entirely sure whether we want that and even if it does i don't think it's boosting the deck enough to be like playable uh, and really worth talking about i also want to talk about leatherworking kit in sort of a very different light uh, than the agar beast hunter list um i wonder if you ever run this in something like reno hunter as a way to kind of tutor a very specific beast out of your deck um I know we were running the Wrangler, the 3-4, uh, 4 mana 3-4 that used to do the same thing. Um, I wonder if Leatherworking Kit is just a cheaper way to do that, because you can run a bunch of spells that summon Beast, and maybe that's a way to make that work, but either way, I'm not super hype on Leatherworking Kit. 
All right, so we move into Selector Breeder. Uh, I mean, again, shout us to Corb for the uh, the sharp eyes. Talking about this one as being a potential buff target. Two mana, one three. Battle Cry, discover a copy of a beast in your deck. I mean, even at a two mana, one three, this card's not seeing play. So let's move on to Wildfire. Wildfire going from two mana to one. Uh, and we can just talk about this in combination with Mordresh Fire Eye going from ten mana to eight. Uh, so Wildfire first. Obviously, can't run it in Even Mage. That was kind of the deck that utilized Wildfire the best. Um, I mean, rip Even Mage, hello Odd Mage. I mean, Odd Mage is very happy to see Wildfire. The issue is, like, just look at Wildfire and then look at, you know, Wildfire and Odd Mage and then look at Odd Quest Hunter. And it kind of just seems naturally like the worst version of that. Uh, I will say, I will say, keep an eye on Odd Mage, though, because I, I, I've done some theory crafting and we'll, I'll talk about the list later. But uh, Odd Hunter has a weakness, a very clear weakness in being susceptible to burn decks. So you can build Odd Mage to be a very good, you know, burn deck. You run a lot of spell damage that's cheap. You have a lot of cheap burn. And then you can actually utilize that as an advantage against Odd Hunter while your Hero Power is still very, very good against other board-based decks like Pirate Warrior. Um, and so I know a lot of people are memeing about Odd Mage. I know I just did. But it is something to, to keep an eye on as potentially being a playable uh, a playable deck in the metagame. Um, yeah, and so then Mordorash going from 10 mana to 8. So yeah, you probably still run this in Even Mage, even though Even Mage is going to be a lot worse without Wildfire. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll maybe they'll give Even Mage some more tools uh, to help make Mordrash an actual playable card. But until they do that, yeah, probably not happy about that. All right, and then the last three buffs. Let's talk about them all together because they have buffed Pirate Warrior in Standard, which is a little bit spooky. Um, so let's talk about Blood Cell Deckhand. Uh, this is the only one that's really going to impact the Pirate Warrior deck that you guys know about. Uh, that's kind of people are suspecting is going to be like the deck to beat alongside Odd Quest Warrior, alongside uh, Odd Quest Hunter. Uh, so yeah, Blood Cell Deckhand going from a one mana two one to a one mana two two. This card was already one of the best cards in uh, in Pirate Warrior, and it's just getting even better. Uh, so yeah, I mean Deckhand's busted, but only marginally increasing the power level uh, of normal Pirate Warrior. Uh, so I do want to talk about the other two decks, uh, Stonewall Anchorman going from a 5-mana 4-5 to a 5-mana 4-6, uh, and then Stormwind Freebooter going from a 3-mana 3-3 plus 2 attack uh, to a 3-mana 3-4 uh, give plus 2 attack. So both of these cards uh, don't see play in normal Pirate Warrior, will not see play in normal Pirate Warrior even after they get buffed. I will say these cards you know, are pretty damn good though in odd Pirate Warrior. And Odd Pirate Warrior was already a deck that was popping up towards the last couple of weeks as people were utilizing this deck to, you know, while it auto conceded to fatigue, uh, Demon Seed Warlock, um, you know, it had a chance against normal Pirate Warrior because you, you have the Odd Warrior clears, right? Brawl, Flurry, Shield Slam, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and the armor, like the armor is the main counter to Quest Hunter. Uh, and so I do think that this deck might actually be a very legitimate thing, right? It's getting two cards buffed and it was already seeing a decent amount of play. Um, so Odd Pirate Warrior uh, alongside the quest, another deck to keep an eye on. All right, so that's it for the patch notes. Hope you guys enjoyed the the really, really quick run through. If you guys are interested in a more in-depth explanation about the nerfs and talking about how they've impacted the metagame, make sure you guys tune in to the next episode of the State of Wild uh, on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that kind of good stuff. That episode will be live early Sunday morning, so make sure you guys keep an eye out for that if you're interested in a more in-depth discussion about those nerfs and buffs. So now I want to get into the deck list. So these are the decks that I think are going to be both the, the top meta decks as well as some deck lists that I'm just excited to play that I didn't really get the opportunity to when Demon Seed was super popular and, and present. So the first uh, few decks that I want to talk about, these are the four decks that I think are going to be the top dogs early out of the gates uh, when the new patch drops on Tuesday. So these are the four decks that I think you, whenever you're building a new deck once the patch hits, I think these are the four decks that you have to keep in mind as the decks to beat. So the first deck, obviously, Pirate Warrior, right? Pirate Warrior, same old, same old. Um, I mean, it's getting a buffed <laughs> uh, Blood Cell deckhand. Uh, but other than that, it's the same old list. I think I, I'm very heavy in the boat of, I still think that Cultist, right? The three mana, three, four Cultist that gives your weapon plus one, plus one. And Dread Corsairs are, are way too slow for the Pirate Warrior list. I think you just want to go really, really heavy on ones and twos complete your quest as fast as possible because if you can drop a quest on turn five you're winning pretty much every game turn six you have a pretty damn good chance at dropping uh at winning games so i, I do think that you really really 
want to drop those three drops. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Pirate Warrior, nothing new. Getting a buff deck hand, going to be probably the deck to beat. So if you're looking at the decks to beat those Pirate Warriors, look no further than uh, than Odd Hunter itself. Um, Odd Hunter, pretty nuts though, right? I think a lot of people have kind of picked up on that. Uh, this is the list that I'm currently favoring right now. Um, running a very specific minion package instead of the tradable stuff uh, because Lothabs are pretty nutso in the mirror, especially if you can get multiple of them off of Stitch Tracker. And obviously the Stitch Tracker can also go fetching for a Beardo. Uh, just don't be unlucky and accidentally click the Baku off the Tracker because that's just a straight misplay. Uh, one thing I will say, uh, you might want to bring in a second Hunter's Mark uh, because of the next deck that we're going to talk about. But this deck already has a pretty insane matchup into Pirate Warrior. Uh, so if you're looking to farm Pirate Warrior on day one, this is the deck to do that. And so yeah, so this is the next deck. Um, I think low-key, one of the better decks in the format. Pretty good matchup into Pirate Warrior already. Uh, and a pretty damn good matchup into all combo druids that are running around. I will say that the, the matchup into Odd Quest Hunter has been a little bit difficult. Um, we are teching back in the two Spy Spread Bakers. I know this is a card that a lot of people ended up cutting. Um... But I think you bring this back in here will help a lot against the odd quest hunters. And hopefully, hopefully, uh, the combination of Nerubian Unravelers and Colt Neophytes can buy you enough time for those giants to hit him in the face and win those games. One of the big advantages to even Warlock was the fact that it beats up on Celestial Combo Druids. Celestial Combo Druids were super, super popular towards the last you know part of this patch because they beat up on the quest warlocks. And it also beat up on those quest hunters. So even though quest warlock is gone... Quest Hunter, I think, is going to remain super popular, and because Quest Hunter is going to remain super popular, I think the Druids themselves will also remain super popular. So yeah, so, I mean, this is just your stock Celestial Druid list um, that a lot of people are running. I think this is the Hijo list running Mechathune and Rabbits. Uh, I think you can also run the Mali list. Honestly, we might even see Togwaggle list coming back into play now that the Fatigue Warlocks are gone. Um, so yeah, so Celestial Combo Druids, I think, are going to remain super, super popular. And so with all of that, those are the four, I think, top decks to beat on day one of the new expansion. So if you're looking to win a lot of games, those are probably the four decks that I would lean towards. And now for the last part of the video, uh, I'm going to go through a couple of decks that I'm the most excited to play. So these are kind of some off-meta decks, or these are some like previously meta decks that are now coming back in because they were pushed out uh, by the Fatigue Warlocks. Uh, or these are just decks that feature cards that I'm just really excited to play with that I never really got the opportunity to. Uh, because they were just way too bad with Fatigue Warlock uh, being around. So the first deck I want to talk about is Death Battle Demon Hunter. So Death Battle Demon Hunter was a deck that towards the end of the last expansion uh, was seeing a lot of play, and it was actually seeing a lot of success. The deck was actually low-key pretty damn good. Uh, and so what I've done is I've taken that core of that deck that was having a lot of success in the previous expansion, and I've kind of updated for the meta that I'm expecting. And so what I mean by that is not only are we running the two new cards in Persistent Peddlers, uh, we're also running double Galaka Crawler and double Mindbreaker. So obviously Galaka Crawler good against the Pirate Warriors, and the uh, the Mindbreaker is pretty damn good against odd quest hunters, right? Because we're running the Mindbreakers, we do need to cut the package of the Illidari Inquisitors uh, and the new Zoth, but I do think that those cards are probably being cut anyways because they're really damn slow, and right now I still think the meta is going to be pretty fast. Uh, in their place, we're running stuff like Talon um, as a way to just kind of tutor out our Blackthorn because it is kind of the bonkers card in our deck. And I'm also trying out the Battleground Battlemaster. While Battlemaster is not going to be swinging 8-8s at the opponent's face, they are going to be doubling up on like 4 attack, 3 attack minions, which is a nice little burst finisher that this deck was previously lacking, especially now that we're cutting Ill Illidari Inquisitors. If you think that your matchup into something like Odd Quest Hunter is fine enough, without the Mind Breakers, I do think that the Battlemasters get even better if we do get to bring back in those Inquisitors. So feel free to try cutting the two Mind Breakers for the Inquisitors, and that's even more insane damage, right? Uh, but yeah, so that's Death Battle Demon Hunter. Um, this is a deck that I actually really, really enjoyed playing at the end of the last expansion, even though I... and I was having a lot of success with it, and so I'm excited to try picking it up again uh, now that you can actually play some kind of mid rangey board-based decks. All right, the next deck that I want to try is Token Druid. Uh, so the main two cards this deck got were Sow the Soils and uh, Composting. So card draw, more attack like Mini Savage Roar. Uh, I mean, if you guys have been following the channel for a little bit, you guys know that this deck is one of my babies. I absolutely love this deck. Um, and I'm excited to try it out without Defile being literally everywhere in the metagame. 
uh, because Defile was, you know, and still is your worst enemy. So hopefully with less Defiles in the metagame, this deck will actually be playable. Uh, I will say, you gotta dodge, you gotta dodge the ship's cannons. And so if you're seeing a lot of Pirate Warriors, I would recommend cutting the Solar Eclipses for actually Lunar Eclipses, the two mana deal three, your next spell cost zero, because that's a really, really efficient way for you to clear <laughs> the ship's cannons, which you don't really have otherwise. Um, but yeah, this is Token Druid. Nothing really fancy or new here. This is a deck that's kind of existed for a while. But I am excited to play it because I do love the deck. And I'm excited to try out composting and draw a million cards. Because, you know, who doesn't love drawing cards? Alright, the next deck is Odd Mage. You know we had to try it once Wildfire got buffed. We had to try it. Uh, so like I mentioned at the very beginning when we were talking about nerfs, um, I, I do want to try building Odd Mage uh, this is a very particular way, a kind of very burn-centric approach. Okay, um, utilizing the cheap spell damage minions and lab partner utilizing the uh, the primordial studies and alongside Black Hat to make all this cheap damage that we have go face even harder. Um, honestly, honestly, I really considered cutting Raz and Janelai for Forgotten Torches uh, just so that we could hit face even harder. Um, so the Hero Power gives you a lot of game, right? Hero Power, Shooting Star, First Flame, Arcane Missiles, Brain Freeze. You have plenty of game against Pirate Warrior. Uh, and the Burn, the Burn is how you beat Odd Hunter. Okay, if you're just matching them Hero Power for Hero Power, they're going to win out because their Hero Power costs zero, ours costs mana. The Burn is, they don't really have any good way to deal with the Burn. And if you build Odd Mage, a very Burn-centric approach, it should be pretty damn good. So the way that I've built this should be really good against Pirate Warrior. And honestly... Giving up the raws will hurt your Pirate Warrior matchup a little bit, but if it's in favor of more burn, and more burn helps you a ton in the Hunter Mirror, maybe it's worth doing. Another deck that I'm excited to play again is Hand Buff Paladin. So this is a deck that uh, was super meta. It was the defining meta deck for a very long period there before it got like six cards gutted. Um, the reason I'm excited to try out this deck is for a couple of reasons. I think the combination of Catacomb Guards and Samuro gives this, match this deck a lot of game against Pirate Warrior. Right? You have your normal cards like Crab Rider, Righteous Protector, Broomstick, uh, but the new inclusions in Catacomb Guard, this card is just absolutely bonkers against board-based aggro, which is what Pirate Warrior is, right? Um, <laughs> as you can see, and you will see, I'm shoving this card in a lot of decks just because I'm assuming that Odd Hunter is going to be everywhere, and Odd Hunters do have a hard time dealing with Mindbreakers. So, I mean, they already have a hard enough time dealing with two fives. <laughs> and so if you can buff up the Mindbreaker by like plus two plus two or like plus three plus three, how the hell are they dealing with that? And if they can't deal with that, they can't deal with you, right? And so you actually have a lot of game against the odd quest hunters if you can find and buff your Mindbreakers. But yeah, Hamba Paladin is a deck I haven't played in a long time outside of like competitive THL settings. And so I'm excited to give this deck a whirl again on ladder. All right, the next deck is Shadow Arena Priest. So this is a deck that uh, I have... Wanted to play ever since United and Stormwind got leaked, and we saw uh, sh uh, Dark Bench of Benedictus, uh, just Shadow, Shadow Arena Priest, giving your hero power the ability to shoot down minions very early in the game. Super important against decks like Pirate Warrior, right? And we still get to run all the normal priest, like good priest removals, right? We get to run Potion, we get to run the Shadow Word cards, we get to run Lash, we get to run Shadow Cloth Needle, all that kind of good stuff. Devouring Plague and Hysteria, and Mass Hysteria. So you still get to run a lot of these really, really good Priest cards. Um, I will say, okay, I, I've i caved, I've caved. I'm running Wizard Finley. So while we're naturally good against Pirate Warrior, we have absolutely zero shot, zero chance against the, uh, the odd Quest Hunters. And so running the Finley Wizard gives me a chance to actually have game against that. Don't know if I wanted to go far enough to include Mindbreaker, because Mindbreaker obviously turns off our own combo, but honestly, it might be worth running. <laughs> so yeah, run this deck if you want to farm the Evenlux and the Pirate Warriors. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Odd Quest Hunter, if you guys know a better way to counter that deck without running Finley Wizard, let me know. I hate it, I hate it, but, you know, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Alright, the next deck is Galakron Shaman. I mean, this is the deck that everybody was so excited to play at the end of Fortress of the Barons. Uh, so this deck getting a couple of new additions. So we have the new weapon that discounts all the battle cries in our deck. Uh, we have Bolner Hammerbeak. Honestly, this card might not be good enough. Um, but just imagining like using it to double up on battle cries with uh, with Shutterwalk or Kronks or um, the actual Shutterwalk invokers themselves. But even stuff like Earth Revenant or Polymorph Effects with the Lilypad Lurker against Evenlock. Uh, or even just doubling up draw with Primal Dungeoneer. 
seems freaking amazing to me. So I'm, I'm excited to try him out. He might not be good enough. If you don't have him, don't rush to craft him. I don't know if he's actually good in this list. Uh, but the card that I do think is really, really good in this list is the uh, the Canal Slogger. I think we should have a pretty damn good matchup into Pirate Warrior, right? Without even running Galaka Crawlers. We have Flurgle Talks. We have the weapons. We have removal with Earth Revenant and, uh, and Canal Sloggers. Then we have the Invoke cards and we have Freeze. Uh, so we should be fine in that matchup. Um, so I'm not going to rush to put Galaka Crawlers. Again, this is another deck that probably really, 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 really struggles against Odd Quest Hunters. So I've shoved in the Mindbreakers. Ideally, we're not hero powering a lot in this deck, anyways, so the Mindbreaker shouldn't hurt us too much. Uh, but yeah, Galakrond Shaman. Uh, there, you'll see a very obvious lack of Mutanus. Uh, the meta is going to be pretty fast, right? And so I don't think Mutanus is going to be uh, good enough. Honestly, if you're seeing a lot of Celestial Druids, Mutanus probably comes back in, or maybe a Lothab at least. Uh, but yeah, so this is my my first draft uh, of Galakrond Shaman. I miss it, man. We only got to play it for like three weeks, four weeks, but uh, I miss it. One of my favorite decks of old, and excited to try it out again. And I know we were talking a lot about even lock earlier, but obviously, Meowth got to play the even arena lock. So yeah, so even lock, pretty straightforward, right? We're running all the like disruption early game with Cult Neophytes, Dirty Rats, Watch Post. Uh, we've got some decent removal, right? That we don't normally run in even lock. Like our, our removal is not going down a ton, right? We have Unstable Shadow Blast and Demonic Assault. Uh, I'm personally running a Demon Package in my even lock, so the combination of Void Collar, uh, Anathrons, and the two big boys with Dreadlords and Moargs give us the uh, the Gul'dan. Uh, I am a little bit worried with only one Defile, one Drain Soul, one Dark Bomb, um, how we're going to fare into into Pirate Warriors. You might want to run a little bit of uh, you know tech for the, the Pirate Warriors and something like a Galaka Crawler. So there's not much we can do to tech against uh, Odd Quest Hunter outside of just hoping we can outheal their damage while putting pressure on them. Um, but if you guys know some tech that I can run an even deck, let me know. Because uh, I'll gladly put it in here because I do think that is one of our deck's weakest matchups. Um, I think this deck will be strictly worse than even lock um, if I had to make a prediction. But I, it's been a long time. It's been a very long time since I have played my yellow cards, my Rena Jackson and my Zeph. So I'm going to take this opportunity to play Rena Jackson and Zeph and be really, really happy about it. And the last deck for today is going to be Odd Quest Pirate Warrior. Yeah, so like I was talking about when we talked about the buffs, uh, when we were looking at the patch notes at the beginning uh, of the video, uh, pretty excited about this deck because I think it has game into Pirate Warrior uh, itself. I do think that, uh, you know, armor kind of naturally counters Odd Quest Warlock, and with stuff like Shield Slams, uh, Risky Skipper Bear Off, Flurries, Brawl, we have a pretty good chance against the even Warlocks themselves. So I actually think Odd Quest Pirate Warrior low-key big big winner uh from this you know set of buffs and nerfs uh and excited to try this out on day one we're running all the cheap pirates right so blood cell corsair is really really good in the mirror blood cell deck obviously getting buffed and it's already pretty damn good in our deck anyways same with first mate same with sky raiders uh we get the cheap removal uh risky skippers while they don't really synergize with some of the other pirates in our deck i mean risky skipper is absolutely bonkers clears the board and combos with bear off really really well we're running the cargo guards armor good playing odd pirate warrior and then we get the two buffed pirates with the freebooter and the anchorman and so yeah that's gonna wrap it up for uh for this video hope you guys enjoyed the patch notes and all of the decks uh you can find deck codes for all the decks that i talked about today down in the description below i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you guys did make sure you guys drop a like comment and subscribe let me know what decks you're excited to play you know once the patch actually hits later this afternoon super excited it, it feels like it's a brand new expansion which is which is awesome which is really awesome i'm really excited that wild is you know i don't want to say saved because i don't know what the meta is going to be like but definitely it feels like it's going to be a hell of a lot better than it was with the demon seed running everywhere but yeah that's going to wrap it up for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys next time